In the time I've been in this hobby, I've seen a few brands rise up to be extremely successful, like for example, Pharma RC. When I began, they started out making extremely cheap level RCs all built on the same platform like the Granite or the Raider. However, for every business success, there are many, many failures. And that's what I'm going to go over today. Brands that are either dead or pretty much dead. Now, something to understand for this video, I'm going to be looking at this from a racing perspective. So if a brand is still kind of around, but isn't nearly at the same capacity they used to be, they may end up in this video. I also won't be going over too much detail about these companies as information about them is scarce at best and non-existent at worst. Before we begin, however, I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and be sure to like the video as well. Let's begin. Funny enough, this is the company that made me want to make a video like this after I saw some vintage Novak speed controls after searching for some cheap electronics for my A-scale. Novak was founded in 1978, making high quality servos for RC aircraft when that was in its boom. Once ground level RC cars and buggies began to pick up steam, Novak began developing electronic speed controls for said buggies and cars. Later on, they would go on to expand into making pretty much anything and everything electronics wise for RC cars, like servos and motors. Claiming many podium places at big league races like IFMA and Roar from the 80s to early 2000s, and the early days of Russia systems in competitive racing. They pioneered the development of programmable ESCs and even brushless motor technology in the RC world. However, the RC world as a whole began to change. You see, early on, only a few different companies even offered brushless systems like Castle, Tekken, and of course Novak. This is due to the fact that not only was the technology relatively new to the RC world, but also because it was ludicrously expensive to produce these brushless motors, which led to them being sold at a premium price. However, over time, Brussels systems began to become cheaper and cheaper with companies like Hobbywing and Hobby King coming into the scene with their Easy Run series for a really good price. Other companies began to lower their prices as well over time, as more and more of the production process went overseas to places like China, but more often than not, Taiwan. Novak, on the other hand, decided to keep all their production process from design to assembly in California. Because of this, Novak Electronics were very expensive to compare to their competition, and unfortunately, their performance didn't really warrant the extra cost beyond that Made in USA badge. Not only that, but other brands began winning at a top level more often than Novak. And because of this and their high prices, people began jumping ship to other brands that offered similar performance for less money. Even though they still suck success on the track, for those who stayed loyal, the general RC hobbyist population simply saw other cheaper options and went with those. In the end, this led to Novak closing its doors in June of 2016. A sad ending for an electric powerhouse. This one may be a bit controversial, as HBI is making a bit of a comeback these days with their new Savage V2 and Vorza, along with other less than successful platforms like the Jump Shot. But to say they're at the same level that they used to be would be disingenuous. If you want an idea of how big they used to be, take a look at all these discontinued kits. Hell, lots of these kits were on my Christmas list growing up when I realized hobby grade RC cars existed after I got my first one, the HPI Sprint 2 Drift. I loved that car, and to be honest, I wish I didn't sell it. Anyway, HPI was initially founded in Southern California in 1986 by a man named Tetsuro Watanabe, and they developed accessory parts for existing cars like wheels, graphene upgrades, and even motors called Uno's Motors. One of them even went on to win a world championship in 1987. Once this happened and HPI was put on the map, they thought it would be a good idea to take the next logical step for many RC accessory companies at the time and try and develop their own kit, the Super F1. With more sales came more money, and more money meant a larger design team. This allowed them to expand on how many kits they came out with, mostly their on-road cars, specifically the RS4, more specifically their Nitro RS4 series. Even though it wasn't the first Nitro-powered RC touring car, it was certainly the most popular for its time. In fact, you can pretty much trace the level of popularity for touring cars, how they are now, to the RS4. This was partially because of how many sponsorships and deals they got from full-size racing teams that people actually knew like Monster Energy with Ken Block and pretty much anyone involved with Falcon Tires, but also because of just how many bodies they had for these cars. No matter how obscured the car, HPI probably had a body for it. 
much like MST is now. It wasn't just OnRoad where HPI shined, however. In 2002, HPI reshaped how we see bashing today with the Savage Monster Truck. The Savage was an 8 scale RC monster truck with a unique chassis design. It had two vertical plates that ran parallel in a line that surrounded the internals of the actual truck. This design would follow the Savage with revisions and updates all the way up to the modern day with the Savage XL V2. These days, the Savage has stayed taken sort of a back seat compared to the now big boys of Arma and Traxxas, but it wasn't that long ago where people were comparing Traxxas and HMI in terms of size and popularity. Later on, in 2006, they merged with Hot Bodies, which began making more race-focused kits with HPI's logos on the bodies to advertise them. Hell, you might have even seen was probably the most well-known and highest-viewed RC racing video on the internet. I would show you it, but I don't want to get copyrighted. HPI had many different banger releases over the years, like the aforementioned RS4 and Savage, but also there are other cars like the Sprint Series, E10 Series, WR8 Series, Blitz short course truck, Firestorm and E-Firestorm stadium trucks, and of course their big boys, the 5th scale Baja series of buggies and short course trucks. Unfortunately, not everything lasts forever, and HPI would start to slip into obscurity during the 2010s. Less and less people were buying HPI products as over time a lot of their designs had become out of date and competition had become more and more fierce from companies like Arma. By 2016, HPI filed for bankruptcy and discontinued pretty much all of their kits. Hot Bodies were split off to become a very successful racing team owned by a Swiss company called Neinhardt, while HPI was bought out by a British company called Ripmax, but didn't really do much with the brand beyond resume production of their few of their aging RC kits, not even improving the dwindling parts support. Later on, they were bought out by a Scandinavian-based Vestergaard group in 2019. Since then, they've actually made an effort to bring back a few of their products with big updates. Most recently, the Savage Monster Truck, RS4 Touring Car, Vorza Buggy and Truggy, and, you know, a couple others. Overall, HPI's future is kind of in the air, but it does look to be going in the right direction at least. Before we go on to the last company I want to talk about, let's rapid fire some companies that were either too obscure to talk about at length or at a decent place in the modern RC world but aren't at the same level they used to be. Kyosho Even though they're still a popular brand for collectors, bashers, and A-scale racers, their 10 scale program has pretty much been left in the dust. These days they mostly rely on nostalgia of the old days to sell re-release kits of a lot of their old designs which is both nice, but also sad. Tokyo Marui Being the genesis for a lot of stadium truck designs back in the day with the Big Bear, you think they'd go on to be pretty successful in RC. Well, you'd be half right. They have been fairly successful, just not in RC. For some of you watching up to this point, you'd recognize them as an airsoft company that's made some pretty popular and well-known airsoft guns. They did eventually return to the RC market in 2000 with a few model RC tanks in the 24th scale. JQ Racing A more recent company, JQ Racing was a company developed and, well, started by JQ Racing. The buggy known as the Car and the E-Car was successful in Europe and was itself a fairly solid buggy. They're also one of the few A-scale buggies to actually come with a pre-assembled kit. Unfortunately, it isn't as supported these days, and JQ Racing seems to have moved on to a new project called the Mayako Project. You guys remember Team Durango? Team Durango was originally founded by Serpent Racing for their off-road racing program in 2008 by a man named Gert Strange. They made a few prototype cars of a 10 scale four-wheel drive buggy, and in Europe they actually performed very good. So much so that the four-wheel drive buggy, otherwise known as the DEX 410, went on to production as a Durango for the mass market. In 2009, the DEX 410 went on to win the IFMAR four-wheel drive world title and second place later on in 2010. Of course, this would mean that Durango would be springboarded into a more of a front scene, right? Well, not really. Even though they were successful at the time, they didn't really advertise the same way other more established brands did. As a result, they quickly faded into obscurity as most people opted to go for the more established, well-known, 
and most importantly, well-supported brands. Many stores simply didn't support Durango parts, and I'm not talking about online support from their parent company, Hobbyco. I'm mostly talking about physical in-store support. Nobody really ran Durango at a grassroots level, and as a result, most hobby stores and tracks didn't see a need to stock Durango parts. Unfortunately for Durango, this became sort of a vicious cycle that ended up with their top drivers jumping ship to other brands that were popular in Europe, like X-Ray, Schumacher, and Yokomo. This eventually led to Durango being shut down by Hobbyco in 2017. There are some things to take away from this tale of lack of sales and bankruptcy. For one, lots of people like to talk a lot about how they would do things differently, and how running an RC company shouldn't be that hard. Well, lots of people have tried, and lots of people have failed. However, more people will try to make waves in the RC world. Some will fail, while many will succeed. Even in the modern RC world where design seems stagnant and innovation seems almost discouraged, there are those out there who are willing to take risks. I just wish they were more appreciated. And that's all for now. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, if I miss any companies that you may miss from the old days, be sure to put them in the comment section below and tell me a little bit about them. Also, I'd like to thank you for watching, as well as my patrons for supporting the channel. Specifically, I'd like to thank Michael Williams, RC World Discord server, Casey Nix, Ben Reeves, Dave Armstrong, Ryan Lamb, Joe Jenkins, Morrison Wad, Julian Lovelace, The Mailman 110, and Brian Lofton. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.